Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Let's all please stand. And let's join in our opening hymn, number 712, in your music issue, Come Thou Almighty King, number 712. Come thou almighty King, help us your name to sing, help us to praise, Father all glorious, for all victorious, Come and reign over us, ancient of days. Come thou incarnate word, who for us death endured. Our prayer attend. Come and your people bless, and give your word success. Fill us with righteousness, Savior and friend, come holy comforter, your sacred witness bear in this glad hour. To us your grace impart and rule in every heart. Never from us depart, spirit of power. To you, O Trinity, eternal praises be forevermore. Your sovereign majesty may we in glory see and to eternity love and adore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. We welcome everyone as we gather together today, this beautiful day here in Chicago land at the Shrine of National Shrine of St. Therese, and we welcome those who are joining us for Mass online. And as we come together today, let's call to mind our faults and failings before the Lord and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Jeroboam left Jerusalem and the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite, met him on the road. The two were alone in the area, and the prophet was wearing a new cloak. Ahijah took off his new cloak, tore it into 12 pieces, and said to Jeroboam, Take 10 pieces for yourself. The Lord, the God of Israel, says, I will tear away the kingdom from Solomon's grasp and will give you 10 of the tribes. One tribe shall remain to him for the sake of David's my servant and of Jerusalem. 
the city I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Israel went into rebellion against David's house to this day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. There shall be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship any alien God. I, the Lord, am your God, who led you forth from the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. My people heard not my voice, the Israel obeyed me not. So I gave them up to the hardness of their heart. They walked according to their own counsels. I am the Lord your God, hear my voice. If only my people would hear me, the Israel walks in my ways. Quickly would I humble their enemies. Against their foes, I would turn my hand. And the Lord your God, hear my voice. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephrathah, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a psychological principle that whenever we're confronted with change, even if that change might be good for us, there's a natural resentment or resistance to push away from any kind of change. And we see that in our own lives and we could see it uh, in the large scale, even geopolitically. We might look at the United States at the time before the Civil War, uh, the Declaration of Independence that all people are created equal, all men are created equal. And uh, the idea of freeing the slaves would certainly have been a good thing, but there was resistance to that. So much resistance, we had a civil war. Or at the time of the civil rights movement uh, with Dr. Martin Luther King, kind of spurring that movement forward, there's always resistance to something that might even be good, good for our country. We can look at the situation today in the Middle East and we shake our heads, a horrible situation which took place with this attack on Israel. But then we say, gosh, 27,000 people killed in Gaza, 80% of the people displaced, most of the people that died are women and children. Uh, maybe we could have a ceasefire, but there's resistance. The same is true on a small level. We might look at ourselves and say, well, you know, I should quit smoking or I should quit drinking or maybe I should exercise or give up that extra piece of cake. But there's always that resistance to any kind of change. I bring this up because when we look at the life of Jesus Christ, when God himself came to the earth, certainly bringing about the greatest change ever in salvation history, Jesus encountered resistance. And the two powers that resisted him the most were the ones that brought him to his death, and they were the Roman Empire and the Jewish religious leaders. Both of these great forces were resisting what Jesus was about. Now, the Roman Empire wasn't too concerned about the Messiah or any of the Jewish religious practices or even who Jesus was. They just wanted to keep this occupied land under control. That's all they were worried about. And yet we see that eventually it was the Roman governor Pontius Pilate who brings Jesus to the death on the cross. 
But the major resistance came from the religious leaders because as Jesus proclaimed who he was, that he was the Messiah, that he was indeed the Son of God, the religious leaders could not fathom this and they considered it blasphemy and they led him to his death. So the resistance was real. Now, we see today at the beginning of Jesus' ministry where he performs this wonderful miracle. He's in an area of the Holy Land there, the Decapolis. It's sort of an area where most of the people are pagan. They're, they're not God-fearing Jews. But this deaf man is brought forward, and Jesus cures him. But interestingly enough, we say, he took him off by himself away from the crowd. And then after he cured him, he told him not to tell anyone now that they had the capacity of speech. So it's kind of puzzling to us, right? We'd say, well, why would Jesus, who's about this ministry of healing and teaching, tell this man, don't tell anyone? I mean, don't we sing, go tell it on the mountain every Christmas? What's going on here? Well, Jesus is aware that the timing is not right. He's aware of the resistance against him. He's aware that as soon as it becomes public about his ministry, people are proclaiming him as on Palm Sunday to be the Messiah, this makes the Romans uneasy, but particularly the Jewish religious leaders will be out to get him. And the timing is not right because his entire ministry, as we see in these early passages from Mark, are early in his ministry. And he needs time to proclaim who he is, to proclaim the gospel, to proclaim uh, the law of love of our Christian identity. So this little mystery here, he says, don't tell anybody, but they couldn't keep it quiet. They were exceedingly astonished, and it only made sense. They told everyone he's done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Eventually, Jesus will stand up to the religious leaders and tell them who he is. It will bring about his crucifixion. But at this point in time, the timing was not yet right for that, so the Lord did his good deeds in private. Now let us stand and offer our prayers to our gracious God. We pray today for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for his good health and security. We pray to the Lord. We pray for peace throughout the world, in Israel, in Gaza, in Ukraine, in Russia, uh, in the streets of our own cities. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick and suffering members of our parish community, family members and friends who've asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the intentions of all the members of the Society Little Flower that are so good in helping us in our Carmelite ministries. We pray to the Lord. We pray for vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, the religious life, particularly for the Carmelite order. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all our beloved dead, for those who've gone before us in faith. Remember in a special way at our Eucharist today, the repose of the souls of Paterno Pactanic and also the intention for Mary Jankaus. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Good and loving God, we offer these prayers and petitions of our faith community gathered here today. Confidence will hear and answer all our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. As we conclude our Eucharist, let's offer a Hail Mary to our Blessed Mother under the title of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Ask her to watch over us and guide us this day. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, pray for us. St. Therese, pray for us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist has ended. Let us go forth in peace. Amen. Our recessional hymn today is in the Breaking Bread music issue, The Spirit Sends Us Forth. It's number 390. Number 390. The Spirit sends us forth to serve, we go in Jesus' name to bring glad tidings to the poor, God's favor to proclaim. We go to comfort those who mourn and set the burden free, where hope is dim to share a dream and help the blind to see. We go to be the hands of Christ, to scatter joy like sea, and all our days to cherish life, to do the loving deed. Then let us go to serve in peace, the gospel to proclaim, God's Spirit has empowered us. We go in Jesus' name.